day by day I'm growing stronger. Day by day my victory's won. As I yield my life to Jesus, day by day I'm overcome. Day by day I'm growing stronger. Day by day my victory's won. As I yield my life to Jesus, day by day I'm overcome. Yeah, day by day I'm growing strong. hard to face, but I know you're always near, as I trust in you my trials turn to joy, and I never need to be, day by day I'm growing stronger, day by day my victory's won, as I yield my life to to face, but I know you're always near, as I trust in you my trials turn to joy, and I never need to be, day by day I'm growing stronger, day by day my victory's won. Good morning and welcome to our worship service this morning. Our theme this morning is being a disciple of Jesus Christ. How do we become a disciple of Jesus Christ? 
So let's find out. Let us worship together. Welcome to worship at Fairfield Glade United Methodist Church in the Sacred Encounter Service, and we are in the pavilion. Let's go to the island again, David. It's a beautiful morning to worship the Lord. This is the day. This is the day. It's a wonderful morning to worship the Lord. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made. Beautiful. Wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's a beautiful morning to sing to the Lord. This is the day. This is the day. It's a wonderful morning to sing to the Lord. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah, beautiful, wonderful. Uh -huh. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Beautiful, wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made. Beautiful day, wonderful day. Beautiful day, so wonderful, yeah. Beautiful day, aha, uh -huh. wonderful day. Beautiful day, so wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. There's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. You can see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place. Oh, hallelujah. the presence of peace in this room. There's the presence of peace in this room. It's got tenderness it found, peace that passes human bounds. There's the presence of peace in this room. your holy name. Oh, alleluia. Oh, alleluia. There's a spirit of love in this place. As we go into our time of prayer together, we lift into God's care all who are ill, those whom we love, those whom we have lost. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, rains have given us a respite from summer's oppressive heat, and we are indeed thankful. As a community, we have missed the county fair, the concerts, the displays, the food. And in this time, we pray for families as children and Ruth must learn to sit still and not talk as they experience a new way of being in school, of wearing masks, of rotating days and times, of learning at home and online. We pray for teachers and administrators for the love they shower on those in the classroom and those at home. We lift into your care those whom we love, all who face illnesses and treatments, those who live with constant pain in mind and body. Wash over them with your healing touch, that your Holy Spirit would bind up the brokenness of mind, body, and spirit. We pray for our nation and our world, for the divisions we have created. Help us to listen to one another to find common ground that we can focus on healing our nation and not divide us further. 
All this we pray as we lift our many voices together to pray as your Son taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for my papa. It was good for my papa. It was good for my papa. And it's good enough for me. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for my old mother. It was good for my old mother. It was good for my old mother. And it's good enough for me. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all to heaven. And it's good enough for me. Well, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Well, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. Well, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, I'm a standing in the need of prayer. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. You know what? It's good enough for me. Woo! I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, though none go with me, still I will follow, though none go with me. Go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided 
to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Time after time, I went searching for peace in some void. I was trying to blame all my ills on this world. I was in. relationships use me till I was done in. and all the while someone was waiting to free me from sin he What is the greatest threat to Christianity today? Some may mention the rise of postmodernism and secular culture, while others may point the finger at the issue of homosexuality or pluralism in the church. But what if the greatest threat is not an external one? What if the problem actually comes from within? If you are to ask me what I think is the greatest threat to our church today, I will say that many Christians are not willing to pay the cost to be a disciple of Jesus. The problem with the church today is that there are too many Christians and not enough disciples. Many Christians have made a decision to follow Christ without making a commitment to follow him. Discipleship demands sacrifice and total commitment. One day, Alexander the Great 
and a small company of soldiers approached a strongly fortified walled city. Alexander raised his voice and demanded to see the king. When the king arrived, Alexander ordered him to surrender the city and everyone inside. The king laughed and said, Why should I surrender to you? You can't do us any harm. We have you far outnumbered. You are no longer a threat to us. Alexander was ready to answer the challenge. Allow me to demonstrate why you should surrender. He ordered his men to line up single file and start marching. He marched them straight toward a cliff. The townspeople gathered on the wall and watched in shock disbelief as one by one his soldiers marched without hesitation right off the cliff to their death. After ten soldiers died, Alexander ordered the rest of the men to return to his side. The townspeople and the king immediately surrendered to Alexander the Great. They realized that if a few men were actually willing to die at the command of this leader, then nothing could stop his eventual victory. Are we as committed to obeying Jesus' command as Alexander's soldiers were to obeying Alexander? Are we as committed to submitting our wills to Jesus as Alexander's soldiers were to submitting their will to Alexander? Are we willing to be that committed to Christ? Many Christians believe that they are a disciple of Jesus Christ because they attend church every Sunday, because they study the Bible and meditate on God's word every day, because they serve the church and help the poor in their community. But according to our passage this morning, none of the above qualifies us to be a disciple of Jesus. Then how to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ? What makes us a disciple of Jesus? Let us turn our Bibles to our text in Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28, and read what Jesus said about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Let's dive into it. Verse 21, From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly, that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, He said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die because they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. After Peter declared, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus began to teach the Messiah must suffer 
many things, including rejection by the elders and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Jesus then made it clear what was required of anyone who would be his disciple. He told his disciples quite plainly that they would have to deny themselves and take up their cross, not just once or twice, but daily, and follow in his footsteps. So what does it mean to deny yourself? Deny yourself, deny oneself, means willing to give up anything in life that hinders us from doing the will of God. In other words, we must put aside our selfish ambition, our own and our own selfish concerns, and be willing to give up anything in life in order to glorify God. So what does, it, what does deny oneself look like? I want to give you an example. When Jesus discussed his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection with his disciples, Peter became upset. Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him because, like other Jews, Peter saw in Jesus the long-awaited hopes of Israel's restoration. Peter was not concerned about a dying Messiah. Like other Jews, Peter's only concern was to make Jesus king of Israel. When Jesus asked the Messiah began to rule his earthly kingdom, Peter and other disciples wanted to sit at his right and his left. I don't know about you, but for me, Peter's reaction in our passage is completely understandable because Peter didn't realize that the Messiah had come to die in order to save God's people from their sins. Peter had viewed Jesus as an earthly political leader, thus Jesus' death was not on his agenda. But Jesus said Peter's attempt to rebuke him was an expression of merely human concern. Jesus told his disciples that true disciples are those who are not worried about their own selfish concerns, but instead are willing to dedicate their lives to the concerns of God. Let me ask you a question. Why are you following Jesus this morning? People follow Jesus for different reasons. Some follow Jesus for the miracles. Some follow Jesus for the blessings. Some follow Jesus for power and fame. Some follow Jesus for salvation. Some follow Jesus because they love him more than anything in this world. Kyle Eidelman, in his book, Not a Fan, stated, The biggest threat to the church today is fans who call themselves Christians but aren't actually interested in following Christ. They want to be close enough to Jesus to get all the benefits, but not so close that it requires anything from them. When God doesn't give you the miracle you pray for, when God doesn't give you the blessings you pray for, are you going to leave him? Or are you going to follow him no matter the cost? The Bible is full of faithful men and women never miraculously healed or rescued. Look at Paul. Paul had rock-solid faith, and he was filled with Holy Spirit. He was no stranger to miracles. God had blinded Paul and then restored his vision, opened prison doors, and even gave Paul miraculous power to heal others. And yet... God did not miraculously take the thorn from Paul's flesh. Though Paul prayed for it three different times, the miracle of healing never came. Instead, 
Paul learned about sustaining grace. Each time, God said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. After he heard from God, Paul denied himself and surrendered his weakness and his will to God's will so that God's strength glorified in his weakness. I don't know why you have decided to follow Jesus, but in order to become his disciple, you must deny yourself. In other words, you must surrender your selfish ambition and your own selfish concerns to Jesus and follow him. And pray this prayer. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine on your way, Lord. Have thine on your way. That's the form of denying yourself. In order to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to take up your cross and follow him. And what does it mean to take up your cross and follow him? In the greatest example of the one who took up his own cross is Jesus. I want you to notice that Jesus never told his disciples to carry his cross and follow him. Only Christ could take up that cross because he alone could die to make atonement for sinners. Jesus' cross represents the whole world because Jesus died on the cross for sinners. Jesus' cross represents the whole world because Jesus died for everyone. Then, what is our cross? Our cross is people whom God allows into our lives. Perhaps you have a difficult child who does not respond well to any kind of godly discipline. Perhaps you have a spouse who refused to change his or her sinful habits. Perhaps you have a brother or a sister or a son or a daughter who never believes Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Perhaps God puts someone in your life who irritates you and persecutes you. Perhaps you carry the cross of your relationship with someone who disagrees with you. You know that God wants you to persevere in being kind and forgiving and respond to your loved ones and others with humility. But tempers run short. Conflicts arise, and every day poses new challenges. There's a story about a man who felt like his cross was too big and too heavy for him to carry. He complained day and night until he decided to go to the cross store to exchange it. He left his cross outside and went in asking the angel to show him where, where to get a new one. As he looked around, he realized that the crosses there were much heavier and bigger than the one he brought. So he finally decided to take his original cross and leave. Brothers and sisters, each of us has a custom-made personal cross that only we can carry a cross of suffering, hardship, and sacrifice. You may look at others' crosses and think, it is unfair that others have it so much easier. 
But that is not always the case. The crosses of others are also custom designed for them to carry. Only they can carry their own crosses. The cross that each person has to carry may be a different size and weight. But the one thing that remains the same is that when we successfully carry the cross, God is given all the glory. We must not feel discouraged when our cross seems too heavy for us. For even Jesus cried out to his heavenly Father, asking that his cup be taken away from him because his cross was heavy upon his shoulders. But when we choose to obey God and walk in his will, the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead lives within us and overflows to those around us. Brothers and sisters, let's admit that being a disciple of Jesus is not easy. It requires constant effort and courage to do God's will and obey His word. It is actually a lot easier to give up and follow self. We can get instant relief and instant gratification that way. How then can we choose to follow Christ instead of self? One thing that helps is to keep our minds focused on the future blessings that Christ has promised to those who persevere in following him. In verse 25 through 28, If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? If anything worth more than your soul. For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. And I'll tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. C.S. Lewis once said, Give up yourself and you will find your real self. Lose your life and you will save it. Submit to death, death of your ambitions, every day, and death of your whole body in the end. Submit with every fiber of your being and you will find eternal life. Are you ready to follow Jesus wherever he leads you? Then sing with me this song. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all the In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well
the splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice it trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god oh we'll see how great how great is our god age to age he stands and time is in his hands beginning at the end beginning at the end the god had three Please receive this benediction. May God empower you to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.